So it's currently quite a shaky time for movies coming out in the DC universe and combining both the reactions to the films and the recent box office performances, it's clear that they need to reapproach the way they go about making comic book movies. Of course, we've got the DCU starting in 2025 and that gives them the opportunity to reboot and do things quite differently. And while I'm reserving my own thoughts on that until we start to get those movies, I've got to be honest, I'm starting to get quite worried about the direction the studio is going in. However, the one aspect of DC films that is working for me, and I think for many other fans and general audience members, is the stuff releasing outside of the main universe with films like Matt Reeves' The Batman and Todd Phillips' Joker. So in this video, I'm going to be discussing what DC as a whole can learn from the success and reaction to those movies, as I think it's stuff that is important for the brand as a whole. Before I get into it though, if you want to keep up to date on any of my future content surrounding the Batman universe and other upcoming DC films, then don't forget to support this upload by giving it a like rating, subscribing to the channel, and turning on your notifications. But without further ado, let's dive into what DC should learn from films like The Batman. So right now, DC is in a bit of a mess. Other than Matt Reeves' The Batman and Todd Phillips' Joker, a lot of the films coming out have been ones that have disappointed those who have seen them, and the films haven't really been seen by that much viewers to begin with. Black Adam disappointed at the box office, Shazam 2 completely flopped, and now The Flash is on the verge of continuing that disappointing streak, making even less than Black Adam on opening weekend. At the minute, it's tracking to make just over $300 million in total, and while things can change, the reception of the film isn't helping it at all. Yes, there's numerous reasons why this film isn't performing very well, and you can assign some of those reasons to other recent films and why they equally haven't performed. Whether it's the fact that DC is starting over with Superman Legacy in 2025, the quality of the films not being the strongest and therefore general audiences haven't had that much interest, or all of the conflictions surrounding the main actor and the many delays and issues that this film has had behind the scenes. But the key thing connected to a lot of the response has to be the lack of general audience appeal for the movie movies being made. As you know, I didn't particularly love the Flash film, and while I found there to be strengths, there was a lot of issues, specifically with the filmmaking, the jumbled tone of the film, and the muddled direction that they were taking. It felt like a bad culmination of filmmaker and studio decision making that didn't have a decisive tone or approach from the outset. And for me, this is apparent with both the quality of the film itself, the more conventional and forced elements, and bad CGI on display that we tend to get in 80% of comic book films right now. Yes, it's mainly a comic book movie problem, but DC are making things even worse by trying to stress on the things that just aren't working for many people, and to me, it feels like they're trying to take as much pages as they can from other studios. But where DC do get things right, and this has been the case over the last couple of years, has been when they truly focus on themselves as an individual brand, both through filmmaking and storytelling direction. The Batman and Joker are prime examples of that very point, and we had two films that equally in their own ways focus on what they're trying to tell, telling that in the best way they can, and allowing creatives to bring that vision to life in the way that they think is best. There's no sense that these particular films have been made by the studio or have a conventional formula underneath them. There is a pure vision. So using Matt Reeves' The Batman as a main example, because it is the most recent successful one, what can DC learn from the artistic and box office growth of that film? Well, for one, as I was just touching on, the film feels director-driven. One of the main issues with DC and Warner Brothers over the last decade has been a consistent pattern of studio interference or making films that have clear bad studio decisions that equal to a low quality of 
product. Yes, I know, Zack Snyder has both creative supporters and people who aren't particularly fond of his work, but a lot of things that went wrong in that saga were mainly to do with the studio and not Snyder as a filmmaker. While I personally love the film, Man of Steel had mixed reactions. And yes, Batman v Superman wasn't the greatest comic book film by any means. But during the beginning stages of the DCEU, Warner Brothers put their trust in Snyder's pitch and they gave him the confidence to make his vision work. And when the movies got mixed reactions, the studio began to go down a much darker path. That path was to completely change films that had already been shot, taking a vision and and making it far worse and misguided. The extended result of that is, well, what we've seen recently. And while there's an argument that the final films in the DCEU don't even matter and that's why people aren't watching them, I'd argue that that isn't even the biggest factor. Most of the general audience don't even know that this whole DC universe is being rebooted and how each film connects to the other. What they do know is that they are not going to spend money on a film that is artistically and narratively poor. And that is what we are seeing with these final films in the DCEU. There's no sense of vision, there's no identity, there's no filmmaking creativity or satisfaction in the final product. It's recycled products that appears more like every other comic book brand we are seeing out there right now. Marvel are having quite the similar issue, but the growth that they once had is allowing them to bring fans in on opening weekend, resulting in less of a disaster. It's still in a bad state and on a bit of a decline, but when it comes to DC, they've abandoned their vision and identity. No one really cares for the poor state of films we're getting, let alone the extended universe at play. And while the old DCEU did have mixed results from the outset, just in watching something like, say, The Snyder Cut, you can at least see the progression of a vision and a style of comic book filmmaking that DC originally put faith in. They broke that faith and now the DCEU has ended with the most conventional and lacklustre movies in the genre. But turning to the expanding Batman saga under Matt Reeves, there's a completely different outlook. Yes, it's separated from universe-based comic book movies, and it's grittier and more natural to what DC fans actually connect to, but primarily, while building its own separated universe, you can feel a director's true print and identity on all aspects of that film. Right from the outset, they put faith in Matt Reeves to deliver his detective-driven vision of the caped crusader. The cinematography, the lighting, the aesthetics of Gotham City, the characters themselves, and the main developing story feel authentically created and driven by a filmmaker. It feels like a true piece of cinema rather than a repetitive studio approach to just ticking all the boxes. By giving the audience a well-made film using a well-known character, one that is still a fresh take on that iconic figure, the audience chose to vote with their box office money. And these exact points can literally be applied to the success of 2019's Joker film. So we essentially know what's going wrong for DC when it comes to their extended universe. And that is having no vision or creative space for the filmmakers that they put in charge of this work. Sure, in the case of The Flash, we don't know whether it was more filmmaker or studio driven, but the consistent forcing of badly done cameos, poor CGI, integral filmmaking and storytelling is surely going to make the audience think that it's bad studio decisions and why in hell would they spend more money to see those types of films. So the main thing that I think they should learn from this is to not repeat what they did before and what has happened with recent DC films. They should focus on the filmmakers and allow them to bring their pitch to life which is agreed on from the outset. And if the approach is to only take on pitches that match the formulaic directions of that studio, then the problems stem right from those early stages. There are creatives out there who are talented in crafting unique films in multiple genres, and if filmmakers like Matt Reeves and Todd Phillips can get that treatment, then why can't others get that within the extended universe side of things, even with there being a continuous narrative? 
DC has always had a unique identity within the comic book sphere and to abandon that and go the route of another studio just because you want to make profit is exactly why the brand is not becoming profitable. The Batman embodied the style and unique sense of atmosphere that a DC film can bring to the big screen and to not look at that and truly see the potential for other characters with interesting stories to be told would be a big opportunity missed. And that brings me to the final topic of discussion, which is my hopes and fears for James Gunn's DCU. While I'm clearly disappointed with the recent films from DC in its extended universe, the upcoming DCU under James Gunn has the chance to do things differently. And having a creative director like Gunn at the helm of it may help to really establish more of a connection and trust between both the studio and the directors it works with. Now yes, I do have initial worries for what could happen creatively. One is that they could go the route of the recent MCU and focus on teasing what's next rather than stressing on the quality and storytelling of each individual film. But they can still find their identity and do something that still feels continually fresh with each feature. Another worry is that even though I really like James Gunn as a filmmaker, I fear that his approach to a comic book film, especially with writing isn't the one I expected nor really want from a rebooted Superman. And on top of that, when it comes to Superman Legacy, the future potential of DC as a universe-based brand on the big screen really comes down to that very film. If Legacy doesn't do well and audiences don't love the film, then I can't imagine the state that DC would be in. The whole thing is built from that very project, and if your new Superman isn't pulled off right and appears like more of the same when it comes to recent Marvel and DC work, then things are really in trouble. But while those are my fears for DC's future, I am hopeful that again, with there now being a creative leader behind it, that relationships can be rebuilt and more filmmakers can be trusted and given the freedom to make the films that they pitch, both narratively and productively. If they can give the directors a part of the DCU the space to make great individual films, films and apply a sense of uniqueness to the comic book landscape, like we saw with Matt Reeves' The Batman, then things can start to repair. They've got to start doing this consistently if they want the numbers to start going upward rather than downward, like they are right now, and it's going to take a lot of rebuilding. DC was once a brand that had identity and respect, and now, not even general audiences are showing up for these films that are a part of an extended universe. Personally, I think The Batman is a good lesson and one that tells the studio that even now, in the midst of bad performances within the comic book genre, that well thought out films with a director's vision at the centre of it, one that is given faith by the studio to begin with, is the way to go. But that was my video discussing what DC should learn from recent successful projects like Matt Reeves expanding Batman saga. It's going to be interesting to see if the DCU can rebuild the universe side of things when it comes to DC as a movie making brand and again I'm always hopeful that they can turn the ship around. Having a filmmaker like Gunn at the helm can really help things creatively but all things need to go right and that includes the involvement of Warner Brothers as a studio too. There's got to be a level of creative trust amongst both the studio and the filmmakers involved, allowing the creatives to make films based on the pitches that the studio would agree to beforehand. This is what is working about the movies outside of the universe ones and you really get a sense of distinct filmmaker approaches on numerous characters. Of course, creator freedom can go in the opposite direction from time to time too, but if you have that initial faith in their vision from the outset, committing to it rather than making choices to make your films more like another brand, I think in the long run there would be less of a disconnect between the fans of the property and these types of approaches. I think they need to get that right with the DCU and really take the time to plan it out and execute it in a strong way. We'll have to see what happens, but as I said, the Batman and even recent films like Todd Phillips Joker are a good lesson for the studio when it comes to the quality filmmaking that can be brought to the big screen. But let me know 
know down below in the comment section what your thoughts are towards the current situation at DC and what do you think needs to happen to really make these universe films connect more to the audience and in general have a much greater appeal. For much more videos and news on the Batman and DC then subscribe to the channel and turn on your notifications. Also if you enjoyed this video remember to leave a like rating and follow me on social media via the links in the description. But anyway I hope you guys enjoyed it, I've been Cortex and as always make some noise.